In this video I show you another 8 quick python refactoring tips for cleaner and more pythonic code. This is part 2 of my refactoring code series. The videos are independent of each other but I recommend that you also check out part 1 for more tips. Now let's get started. Number 1. Merge append into list declaration. Let's start with a simple one. Instead of declaring an empty list and then appending to it, just initialize the list directly with all elements. This shortens the code and makes the intent more explicit. It is also slightly more performant since it avoids the function calls to append. The same holds true for filling up other collection types like sets and dictionaries. Number 2. Use items to directly unpack dictionary values. When iterating over a dictionary and you need both the key and the value, then don't access the values manually. Instead, iterate over dictionary.items which gives you both the keys and the values at the same time. This saves us the line that we used to assign to players and the code now reads more naturally with a touch less duplication. Number 3. Replace range lang with enumerate. This is a similar tip that I have mentioned several times before. If we need to iterate over a list and need to track both the index and the current item, use the built-in enumerate function instead of range lang. This returns both the current index and the current item as a tuple. So we can directly check the value here and also access the item with the index. Enumerate also comes with an optional start argument. If you use it, the counter starts at this value, but be aware that the items still start at the very first one. Number 4. Replace a manual loop counter with a call to enumerate. This is also very similar to before. Sometimes I see code where iteration is performed over the items directly, which is not bad by itself, but then a counter is needed and this gets manually incremented inside the loop. Again, here you can simply use the enumerate function. This is simpler and also faster. If you just need to count the number of items, then also don't iterate over the loop and manually count all items. Instead, simply use the length function to get the number of elements in the list. Number 5. Simplify conditional into return statement. When we reach the end of a method and want to return true or false, a common way of doing this is like so. If the condition is true, we return true and otherwise we return false. However, it's neater just to return the result directly like so. One thing we should be aware of here is that this can only be done if the expression evaluates to a boolean. Both is instance and is subclass are functions that return a boolean, so this is fine. But in the next example, the first expression pythonistas is a list and not a boolean value. If pythonistas is a valid non-empty list, this would return the list instead of an expected boolean and then potentially be a bug in your application. So to make sure we are returning a boolean here, we can wrap the return in a call to the bool function. Number 6. Merge duplicate blocks in conditional. We should always be searching for opportunities to remove duplicated code. A good place to do so is where there are multiple identical blocks inside an if-elif chain. In this example, both the if and the elif lead to the same performed function. So we can combine the first two blocks using or to remove the duplicated call to the function. Now if we need to change the process standard payment line, we can do it in one place instead of two. Number 7. Replace multiple comparisons of same variable with in operator. We can refactor the previous code even one step further. Since we repeatedly check the same variable against multiple values, we can shorten this by using the in operator. If the currency value is in the defined list, we do the dedicated action. And to improve this even further, we should use a set here. Looking up values in a set is faster and we want unique elements here anyway so a set is the better choice. Number 8. Replace yield inside for loop with yield from. This is an advanced tip if you're already familiar with generators. One little trick that often gets missed is that Python's yield keyword has a corresponding yield from for iterables. If you have an iterable like a list, instead of saying for item in iterable yield item, you can simply say yield from iterable. This is shorter and removes the manual looping over the iterable which also can result in an improved performance. Alright, these are all the refactoring tips for this video, but before you leave I want to show you one cool and free extension that you can install for VS Code and PyCharm and which helps you with these refactoring operations. The extension is called Sorcery, it uses AI to identify refactoring patterns and then lets you change the code with one click. I will leave you a link in the description if you want to test it yourself.
I hope you enjoyed these tips and if so then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Also don't forget to watch part 1 of the refactoring series and then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!